Hi guys, and welcome back to the Cybersecurity Crash Course for small and mid-sized organizations. In today's lesson, we're going to look at tech support scams. Tech support scams are growing, they are a serious threat for small organizations, and scammers have some pretty sophisticated ways that they are getting organizations to fall for their ploys. So let's take a look. Before we get too deep in today's lesson, we are on module seven of our cybersecurity crash course. Be sure that you go and check out our other lessons. There is lots of value, lots of demos that will be very useful for you in helping secure your small and mid-sized organization. And final housekeeping point, be sure that you check out our companion guide, the link provided there. We have a synopsis of each module. We have links, reference exercises you can conduct to help you and some other free tools in there that will help you better secure your small and mid-sized organization. So be sure you visit that link and you download that guide. So at the end of this video, I'm gonna show you a very sophisticated way that scammers are using to get individuals to fall for their ploys. And even individuals I know have fallen for some of these ploys. But before we get that deep in, Let's start very, very basic. What, what do scammers do most of the time? Most of the time they pose as a well-known company. You're probably familiar with this. They say they're Microsoft support, Dell support, Apple support, QuickBooks support. Any company you use, there's likely a scammer out there that will say that they are support for that company. And they, they try to get you to come to them. And they use a few methods that we're going to look at. Ultimately, what do the scammers want from you? They want to have you open a file or run a program that is either going to give them remote access to your computer so they can do a couple tricks that will make you think that they have locked your computer or you have malware on it and they want you to pay ultimately, right? The other thing they might try to do is they might try to install actual malware on there. These aren't as common, but they do happen sometimes. They typically always want to you to allow remote access to their computers, to your computers. They might appear to leave their remote access while you go to a bank account or do something of that nature to pay them, but they are really still there in the background. They have just closed most of the time the windows that allow you to see that they're on there. And their ultimate goal is they're always trying to get you to pay for something. So that's a big red flag. If your support is trying to get you to pay for something on the spot, that is a red flag that something is up. Now, not all scammers are Indian. That has become a misconception. Unfortunately, a large majority have been historically, but there are some very sophisticated scammers nowadays that are not Indian and do not have an accent. So that is not a measuring stick you can use. So let's briefly take a look at just a couple of ways that the scammers will try to get you to think something is wrong with your computer. And to do that, we're gonna have to go to the lab. So tech support scammers have a whole host of ploys that they'll try to use to get you to think something is wrong with your computer. But I wanna run through just a couple so that you're aware of the kinds of things they might do. So I'm in a command prompt on a Mac. You might be on Windows, whatever operating system you're on when the attacker tries to pull these ploys. But they will try to do something like this. They'll, they'll try to tell you that foreign hackers have gained access to your computer. And what they're usually gonna do is run a netstat command. And they're going to try to use that to show you, see, there are foreign addresses and they are connected to your computer and your computer has malware and these foreign hackers are taking over your computer and they tell you a whole story about it. When the truth of the matter is, these are just the background processes or the websites that your computer has a link established with. This could be Google. This could be any number of website addresses. And as you can see, my computer is pulling down. I have quite a few browser tabs open, but you can see my computer is pulling down all of those addresses that I have communication with. And the attackers will try to use this to fool you. So let's go ahead and clear that one out. And the next thing they'll try to do a lot of times is they'll try to say that they, they'll open a command prompt and they'll tell you that you have connected to a bank server and they want you to log in or fill out some kind of information. And they'll do something like this. They, they'll have remote access to your computer and they'll minimize the window so you don't see it, but they still have access. And they'll type in here something like,
and then they'll tell you to fill in your username and then they'll tell you to type in your password. And when you say something about it, it says command not found, they'll try to give you some story. These are the kinds of things that attackers will do. Please know you're not connected to a bank server. This is simply a command prompt or a terminal as Max call it. And you are just, they're stealing your information as you type. That's all that's happening. So one very unique way that tech support scammers are fooling individuals into falling for their scams is by infiltrating web search results. And what they'll do is they'll buy ads so that their websites and their services show up at the top of the web page. So for an example, if you came to Google and you typed in free Office 365 security because you had an issue with Office that you needed, Office 365 support that is, if you had an issue with Office you needed resolved, the scammers will buy ads because ads show up before actual websites. And a lot of people will look at these, think they are legitimate, and they will go to these websites, call the numbers in there, and then the attackers, the scammers begin working their ploys to get money out of you. Now, I'm not talking about these particular sites here in this right now. These might be legitimate. I have not investigated them. But these ads change all the time based on who's willing to pay the most. So the spammers, the scammers, will pay a lot for these ads at certain times to get traffic into their fake call centers. And this is not just for Microsoft Office or Office 365. You can see this for all kinds of support, QuickBooks, banking. There are all kinds of support schemes that this happens with. So when you are interacting with a scammer, what are they gonna ask you to do that you can look out for or the individuals at your organization should be aware to look out for? Because you have to train your employees. This is a risk that they are going to deal with on a daily basis. We've had to do incident investigations where employees have fallen for these types of scams and we had to investigate to be sure that the malware or the scammer did not pivot into the network in any way. So the scammers are usually going to want remote access and with the many tools available for this, this is not hard for them to do. They'll send you to a link to download an applet that you run and they can remote onto your computer. They may want you to enroll in a fake computer maintenance or a warranty program. These programs are completely useless and of no value to you or your organization. You should enroll in your warranty program when you buy your devices, but coming back later and buying a warranty doesn't happen most of the time. They may want you to install some kind of application. And like I mentioned, that could be an applet that gives them remote access or it could be actual malware that they want to put on your computer so they, they can give persistent access because here's what you have to understand. The initial interaction with you is not the only way the scammers make money. These are scamming rings and there are huge organizations built up around this, making a lot of money. So they may fool you into paying for something up front, but then they also will sell your information to other scammers. If you fall for their scam, they will sell your information as someone who is, has the potential to fall for other scams. So they'll sell your name and list. They may try to install some kind of malware on your device that either adds you to a botnet or provides persistent remote access to your device by the attacker. They can get to your device anytime they want. And then they can sell that access to other bad actors. So this is just, the scam is just the first of the nightmare. Next, they'll try to sell you some kind of software. We saw this a lot in the early days of antivirus. We called it scareware, where you get a pop-up about your computer is full of malware, it's at risk, um, or you have alleged foreign addresses connected to your computer like I showed you in the demo. And the scammers will use that fear to try to get you to buy a fake product or a poor product that they are trying to sell you. And usually you can get it elsewhere if it is even legitimate. And a big thing that the scammers will do is they'll send you to a website, quote unquote, to fill out a form. 
um, with personal scams, not tech support scam necessarily, sometimes they'll, they'll open a command prompt and they'll type in some kind of question and they want you to fill it out and they tell you that it's connected to a bank server, connected to some kind of server, whatever, whatever. It's actually not. But in the tech support scam version, they'll likely s send you to a form and this form has sensitive information for you to fill out or they might try to make it look like a login portal but this login portal is fake and they get your credentials that's another very common tech support scam so those are some of the things a scammer will ask your employees to do and you should train your employees on all of these actions the detriment that they bring to your organization and to avoid them at all cost so what are some ways that you can protect your business from tech support scams like the ones we've talked about or any of the other variations out there? First of all, if you ever, ever, ever get a call about something being wrong on your computer, hang up. It's not real. Think about it. Microsoft is a huge company making billions and trillions of dollars a year, right? Do you think they're really going to take the time to keep up with your computer and call you when something goes wrong? Probably not. They have better things to do and better ways to make revenue, correct? So if you get a call about something being wrong on your computer, unless it is your managed service provider who you know, you know their voice, and you have verified who they are out of band, use some kind of alternate communication, you're not going to get a call about something being wrong on a computer. Even if you look up the number and it looks real, it's not. It is very, very easy to spoof a phone number. So you know you can't trust phone numbers. Next, if you ever see a pop-up message on your device, or if you're on the web, about something being wrong, do not call the number in that pop-up and do not click any links in a pop-up. Those links could be used to get put malware on your device and those phone numbers are not real. If you do have concerns, you should contact a legitimate support number. Do not use the number in an ad like I showed you in the demo. Instead, go to the company's website and find their support number off of their legitimate website. Never give out your password, ever, ever. There's no reason to ever give your password to anyone. You should never give your password to vendors. You should never give your password to tech support. You should never give your password to anyone, period. And do not give remote access to these individuals. If someone needs remote access, a vendor, you should get with your IT and discuss a secure way to do this. And there are ways to do it. But on the phone, you should never give out remote access to these individuals. So what do you do if you fall for the scam or someone at your organization falls for the scam? How do you remediate the damage and what steps should be taken? First of all, if you have shared a password, if you put it into a form, if you gave it to an individual, or you typed it anywhere while they were connected to your computer, change that password on that account and every account that you have used that password. Because once a password is connected to you, it is easy to find your other accounts other places because of all the data dumps and all the data leaks we've had over the last decade or so. This brings up another very important security topic, which is use unique passwords for every account. You should never use the same password for any two accounts. This means you're probably going to have to use a password manager so that you can keep up with all of your passwords. Number two, if you fall for a tech support scam or someone at your organization does, use a legitimate, use a legitimate security software to scan your device and to delete any malware or any remnants that they might have left on your computer. Contact a security professional to help you with this if necessary. We've done many incidents, investigations on tech support scams where we've had to come into an organization to scan their networks to look for remnants that scammers and attackers left behind. So there are plenty of organizations that can help you do this. Number three, if that device is on the network, you should probably have a professional check the rest of your network because it is possible that they try to pivot from that device to other devices on your network. They try to install some kind of malware, maybe even ransomware, tech support ransomware schemes. It's good to have your entire network checked. Number four, 
If you have bought bogus products or services, you can ask your credit card company to reverse those charges. If it was fake and you can prove that to them, many times they will reverse that. Don't forget, you should watch for repeated charges that are attempted by the scammers. They might try to set you up on a subscription quote unquote service without telling you that. And that is something to be aware of. Again, these individuals are more or less and they will do anything to make additional money. They will stay on the phone with you for hours to coax you into providing them money. And finally, even if you don't believe you have fallen for a tech support scam or any kinds of scam in your organization, you should regularly check your statements at your banks for any kind of charges you did not approve. And finally, if you are in the United States, you can report these scams to the FTC or the FBI. For the FTC is ftc.gov slash complaint. Uh, the FBI has a portal where you can report these kinds of scams as well. They are not going to call you about your scam most likely, but what they do is they collect this data and when they have enough data about a certain scam scheme or a certain scamming group or individual, they will go after them. And finally, the best thing you can do to prevent your employees from falling prey to tech support scams is training your employees with security awareness training. Keep it in front of them so that they are aware of the risk, they are aware of the threat, and they are less likely to fall for it. Our organization has partnered with Wiser, and you can get a completely free security awareness training program. Just head to training.cyberx.tech and sign up to start training your employees on the risk of scams and other security threats for completely free and in less than two minutes a video.